defending national champions. In 1993, the Florida State Seminoles won their first ever football national championship. The motto for the 1994 Seminole football team would be repeat. However, that would be no easy task. Off-season distractions would cause several player suspensions. The infamous Foot Locker incident would definitely hinder the team for a good part of the season. Also, Charlie Ward, gone. How do you replace the Heisman Trophy winner, who was most certainly the best player in college football? The 1994 Seminoles had to find an identity of their own, and they did. On offense, this was just the fourth FSU team to rush for 2,000 yards and pass for 2,000 yards in the same season. Warwick Dunn would lead on the ground with 1,026 yards rushing. Quarterback Danny Cannell would complete nearly 60% of his passes for over 2,600 yards. The Seminoles would lead the ACC in passing offense, scoring offense, and total offense. The defense was again punishing. Led by Derek Brooks, Derek Alexander, and Darrell Bush, the Florida State defense was the fourth best in the nation. Clifton Abraham and Corey Fuller anchored a strong secondary that ranked fourth in pass defense. In the ACC, the Seminoles led in nearly every defensive statistic. This team would win an astonishing 24 straight ACC games, setting a new record. In what turned out to be a very competitive conference, the Seminoles simply dominated. FSU would finish 1-1-1 one, one, and one in their non-conference schedule. That would include a dramatic victory over Notre Dame and an incredible comeback over the Florida Gators. Bobby Bowden Seminoles would finish the season at 9-1-1 one, and, one, and earn a Sugar Bowl bid. Throughout the season, Florida State would display Seminole pride. On a hot and steamy afternoon, the defending national champions took to the field for their first defense of their national title. A Doak Campbell Stadium crowd of over 74,000 looked on with an ABC sports television audience as the fourth ranked Seminoles play host to the Virginia Cavaliers. Now don't forget you're defending national champions. Now by golly, hit the field like it and play like it. With a summer of distractions resulting in the suspension of seven players, the tribe came out of the locker room looking to vent their frustrations on an overmatched Virginia Cavalier squad. However, Virginia takes advantage of a Seminole turnover and goes on top early. As the first quarter winds down, Florida State starts to move. Danny Cannell to Warwick Dunn combined for 75 yards on the drive. The Knowles put the first points of the season on the scoreboard. For me especially, it was probably one of the uh, biggest moments of the season for me. It was my first start and uh, you know, following Charlie Ward was such a, a big deal to a lot of people and you know, I wanted to show them that we could move the ball. And, uh, we started off a little slow, but you know, once things got clicking, you know, um, made a few throws to work and guys like that. They're going to make big plays happen. And, uh, offensive line started to do great, and you know, we really started to 
uh, execute well. Soon, Cannell heats up like the Florida humidity, hitting on eight of 10 passes. Eleven plays, and 74 yards later, a Canal to Billy Glenn touchdown has the tribe on the board again. Andre Wadsworth and Julian Pittman soon ring up the season's first big defensive play. The offense wastes little time capitalizing. The Cavaliers soon learn that defense is the name of the game in Tallahassee. Drawing the wrath of Seminole defenders, Virginia's first half possessions result in six punts, two fumbles, 27 yards passing, and only 78 yards of total offense. Sam Coward, Derek Alexander, and the Bushes are relentless, showing no mercy. Well, I think it was important for us to come out and establish ourselves. You know, it was the beginning of the season. It was the first half, and uh, we might have been a little bit unsure about ourselves, so we went out there and, and played fired up, and I think that we established our, uh, our tone for the season. Well, they caught Florida State coming in, you know, hot off of, you know, two a days. You know, we were ready to play a football game. When you catch a team as hungry as we were, you know, you're coming in our backyard, you're going to have a hard problem with it. And I think we showed them what happens when you come to Duke Campbell early in the season. Clifton Abraham makes the pick to open the second half and gallops 37 yards, setting up shop for the offense again. Bobby Bowden's Warriors add three more touchdowns, and it looks like business as usual for Florida State in the ACC in 94. Yeah, that, uh, that's a, one of the most amazing wins we've had all year is the, the one with the University of Virginia. But it was early in the year, and we were fresh, and uh, kids were excited. We didn't know what we had, and they didn't, they didn't know what they had. And uh, a big advantage, I think, was playing them in Tallahassee, Florida. The fourth-ranked Seminoles run their ACC win streak to 17 with a convincing 41-17 victory in what was to be an early conference showdown. Florida State flexes its early season muscle and manhandles what would later become a very solid Virginia football team. Fact. Even the most talented, finely tuned football team at the top of their game can be brought down to earth at any given moment. 32 point favorites. The fourth ranked Seminoles found themselves in a dogfight, trailing at the half to the Maryland Terrapins and ACC first. The second half, however, is a totally different story, more like the tortoise versus the hare. While Maryland's offense continually sputters due to a brutal Seminole defense, Florida State's offense revs into high gear. Five touchdowns and 731 yards later, and this one is little more than a moral victory for Maryland. The Seminole's dominating defense holds the run and shoot offense to only 52 yards and three first downs in the second half. Danny Cannell throws for 427 yards. While Warwick Dunn and Zach Crockett both reach the century mark, the Seminoles abuse Maryland, closing in on the Terrapins' ACC win streak of 21. After a 56-14 route against the Wake Forest Demon Deacons, the Seminoles returned home. A Dope Campbell Stadium record crowd of over 78,000 fans welcomes the Knolls home for an ACC showdown between the third-ranked Seminoles and the 13th-ranked Tar Heels of North Carolina. In a matchup that many early season predictions had for the conference title, both teams entered the game with perfect records. To add to the hype, this ACC showcase would be shown nationally on ESPN. Okay, now, uh, of course, you heard Washington beat Miami today down at Miami. 
Washington beat Miami at Miami. Now, the significance of that is that if they can lose, so can other people. We must not let it happen here. We must not let it happen here. Now, men, they are a good-looking bunch of kids, as I told you. Good-looking, physical, much bigger than you are. Much bigger than you are. So you just have to go out there and wear them down. You just have to go out there and wear them out. Get as hard as you can. Now, remember, it's a 60-minute game. I saw too many teams play today that jump way out ahead and start celebrating and got beat bad. Well, Miami got way ahead, 14 to 3, and got killed. Uh, Colorado jumped way out on uh, Michigan. Michigan came back and was killing them the last I saw. I don't know what it is now. So whatever happens in the score out there early, it don't mean a thing. If you jump ahead, don't get, don't, don't get overcome. Just keep fighting, keep going, keep going. Early on, this game looks as if it would be another typical ACC blowout. Danny Cannell leads the nation's top-ranked offense with some crisp passing on the game's first drive, hitting on four of his first five passes. The Tribe does it on the ground as well, behind the legs of Dunn and Crockett. The Cannell to Pearsall TD caps a 12-play, 79-yard drive that eats up over five minutes to take the early lead. Their defense was pursuing so well to the outside. They was trying to keep, keep away the sweep. And I guess on one play, I cut it back against the grain. I mean, that just set the tone for the rest of the game. For the Tar Heels, it's three and out in their first possession. Taking over in Seminole territory, momentum swings quickly. As Cannell misfires on the screen pass, the Tar Heels run the option to perfection, and this one is knotted up at seven. The teams exchange punts before Darrell Bush and Orpheus Roy give the offense the emotional lift. Warwick Dunn adds fuel to the fire, darting for 46 yards. One play later, Andre Cooper goes way up on top for an incredible touchdown grab. An explosive first quarter ends with FSU on top, 14 to 7. The Carolina offense is completely shut down in the second quarter. Led by Darrell Bush and Devin Bush, the defense limits the Carolina option attack to a mere 97 yards of total offense in the first half. Well, North Carolina was, was very experienced. They had uh, Jason Stanton, second quarterback, and he was um, a big problem for us. You know, he could throw the ball, and he was experienced at the option. And they had Johnson and Johnson at the at the tailback. So um, it was it was important for us to establish ourselves against them. You know, they had a, a very powerful running attack, and then this year they added another threat at pass. So uh, if we were going to do anything and establish ourselves in the ACC, we needed to beat them. Scott Bentley knocks one through the uprights from 37 yards out, giving FSU a 10-point halftime lead. The Seminoles look to deliver the knockout blow early in the second half. Two picture-perfect six-play scoring drives have the Tar Heels feeling blue. The first drive starts on the ground, then goes through the air. First down, goal from the one, handoff, pocket, touchdown, Florida State. Just like that. Kez McCorby makes his presence known in the second drive, grabbing two long balls and snaring the touchdown. One of the five, three, two, one, touchdown. Before you could blink, Jason Stanisek and Carolina add 10 points to the scoreboard. In what is turning out to be a tremendous battle of conference heavyweights, it's nail-biting time for Noel fans. Hoping to take the momentum back, FSU needs to make something happen. Unfortunately, Danny Cannell is sacked, fumbles, and Carolina is in FSU territory again. But on this September evening, it was not to be for Carolina faithful, as the Knowles defense slams the door on any Carolina comeback hopes. That was a ball game in which we shut our offense down at the end of the game. I, I don't know. I think a lot of it was, uh, was my fault because I had just watched the LSU-Auburn game the week before and saw LSU with a very comfortable lead winning a game they could not lose. 
except they wouldn't quit throwing the ball. And so I, I kind of had that in the back of my mind. I guess we had North Carolina 31 to 7 in the fourth quarter. Look like we had it if we just don't do anything stupid. So I kind of shut the passing game down. You know, just just a little mixed a little bit, but not much. And then, uh, boy, they they sensed it. They sensed it, and they got fired up. Then they got a couple of breaks. We we fumbled or something. They uh, got an easy score on us, and uh, all of a sudden you had a, a decent ball game. In an emotional fight for conference supremacy, Florida State remains king of the hill with a 31 to 18 triumph. Warwick Dunn leads the ground attack with 121 yards. Nine receivers catch passes. By the time the clock ticks to zero, another hopeful opponent tastes defeat. All right, now, uh, they really, well, they, they, they took it to it. We won the game, we won pretty. Uh, I, I thought you guys fought you. G guts out. Our problem is not hustling. That, that's not our problem. And usually that's the problem. You can't get you guys to hustle. But that's not our problem. Our problem is mistakes. Our problem is mistakes. We beat North Carolina, who I think means a lot better than I thought. Y'all, y'all think it's pretty good. Y'all played against it. I think it, I thought it was a lot better than I thought, you know, but, but, but what I'm saying is, man, I don't think that's good enough to beat Miami. Rivals, a person or group in competition with another or others, usually resulting in friction between the two groups. Over the past years, the Miami-Florida State rivalry has grown into one of the fiercest in the country. This year's game would be no different. The 13th ranked Canes entered the game surrounded with question marks and doubts. The NCAA's longest home win streak had come to an end. The character of this year's hurricane squad was being questioned. The Seminoles entered the contest with a number three ranking and a 4-0 record. It would be Danny Cannell's first start in the hostile environment of Miami's Orange Bowl a place where five previous Seminole newcomers at quarterback had been unsuccessful. Probably the most uh, exciting game I've ever been in, uh, most intense game I've ever been in. Uh, probably uh, that one of the best defenses that we faced all year, and uh, it was a tough time for me. You know, I think I learned a lot from it, and, and hopefully you know, I'll be a better quarterback because of that game. Once again, the game would be televised to a primetime national television audience on ESPN. After receiving the opening kickoff, Miami promptly turns the ball over. The Orange Bowl crowd grows very quiet as Cannell leads the offense downfield. But a third down interception brings back memories of past Orange Bowl doom. Miami brings the crowd back to life with a scoring drive ending on a two-yard James Stewart touchdown run. On the Hurricanes' next possession, the defense, led by Henry Crockett, holds their own, forcing the punt. This one never gets off as Florida State special teams force the miscue. The tribe's other Crockett, Zach, cashes in for six points, but the extra point misfires and the visitors trail by one. Well, the momentum came because we were right down 7 zip and we knew we had to do something to get back into the game and get the momentum of the team up. So we had to b make a big play. And with that touchdown there, they gave us a big play. And that was just the start of many coming out there and playing extremely hard. The Warriors begin to wage an emotional battle. Zach Crockett leads the rampage via the ground game. Then through the air, the Seminole drive ends as he grinds up the middle for the touchdown. The Knowles go for two and convert. Now it was 7-6 and we needed something, to, something else to keep pushing, so we was on a roll right then. They gave me a screen pass on the side, got behind the offensive lineman, and they laid me down the field and I broke two tackles. And they, hey, you got it to the two-yard line, then they gave me another chance to get it in from the two-yard line. So a lot of power blocking on the offensive line and, a lot, and me running hard to get in the end zone, it just worked out fine. The defense is again dominating stopping the Canes and setting up another special teams highlight. Again, Miami cannot get the punt off, and FSU looks to capitalize. Another Seminole turnover, and Miami has new life. Six plays later, and this one is tied at 14. 
the two games that disappoint me more than any in regard to coaching, and I mean I go back to myself, is the Auburn game of 1990 where we had a 20 to 10 lead and I actually just blew it, just threw the game away. And then the other was the game against Miami when we actually, we were about ready to put them away there in the second quarter. I mean, we, we think we go up 21 to 7 on them and instead we throw an interception, they go down and get one and get back in the ball game. And so I was just, uh, just uh, impatience on my part, throwing out of the end zone. I should not have done that, let that quarterback be, I catch the pressure of that. Uh, I really failed a disappointed, uh, very disappointing game. The Seminole offense loses its edge for the remainder of the first half. The Canes put up seven more just before the half to take the lead. If we went up 21-7, those guys would have gave up. You know, because our defense was pretty, pretty hot at that particular time. But when uh, they came down and scored, you know, going into halftime with the lead, that just gave them incentive and that just put a little more fire up under them and it just carried on to the second half, you know, and, and I, they just created some turnovers. Miami was playing their best ball. Realizing they are not playing to their potential, Florida State tries to regain momentum and get back in the game. Early in the second half, Sean Hamlet picks off a pass from Frank Costa and the Seminoles are on the move. The drive stalls at the Hurricane Six, and Scott Bentley gets three. FSU eventually adds another field goal, but Miami pulls away for the 34 to 20 win. Miami would find a way to exploit Seminole weaknesses with a typical Orange Bowl performance. For Florida State, it was time to regroup. For this 1994 campaign was too young, and these fighting warriors had too much pride. Coming off the emotional loss to Miami, the Tribe looked to rebound against the struggling two and four Clemson Tigers. Instead of an inspirational effort similar to last year's game against NC State, Coach Bowden leaves the game with more questions than answers. Is there a quarterback controversy in Tallahassee? Has the kicking woes that plagued the Tribe early last year returned? Why hasn't the offensive line gelled together yet? And why is the offense struggling inside the red zone. Overshadowed by the problems were fine individual performances on both sides of the ball. On offense, Warwick Dunn, 17 carries, 133 yards and two touchdowns. He'll hand it off to Dunn. Dunn tries to pop outside, breaks the tackle to the five, to the four, three, two, one, touchdown! The offensive line did a good job blocking that day because Clemson had a good defense overall. They had a good linebacker, good defensive line. And offensive line just took control. Omar Ellison, four catches for 60 yards. A punishing effort by the defense. Derek Alexander, Renard Wilson, and Darrell Bush lead FSU's sack attack that records five KOs on the day. Clemson manages only 149 yards of total offense while passing the midfield stripe just twice. You know, coming into that week of practice, we knew it was time for us to go out there and play Florida State brand of football, and it just happened. Clemson caught us at that time, you know, and I guess the score showed for what it was. They just started gelling better and better, and, and uh, they've, they've got to be, for us to finish the season like we want to finish it, we had to have a great surge by our defense. The Tigers scratch and claw to pull the upset, but the Garnet and Gold defense is too much as the Seminoles prevail 17 to nothing. Before the season began, many people believed there would be an undefeated team in the game when Florida State and Duke squared off. However, no one would have guessed that team would be Duke. 7-0, the Blue Devils were out to prove their record was the real deal. Now, this ball game is just, just like, let's, man, we really need to make it a wee, a wee thing. You know, a wee thing. Our, us, our stadium, our fans, we, everybody pulling for everybody. 
Defense pulling for the offense, offense pulling for the defense, everybody pulling for the kickers and the punters and the kicking team and the special team. If somebody does something <coughs> bad, help him out, help him out, don't get on him, you know, encourage. You've already paid the price, you know. <coughs> Who will be our leaders on offense? Who is going to lead on offense, you know? There's no limit of who can. Just, boy, just step out there and be a leader. Step out. I think our defense has more leaders. Well, our offense has got a lot of young guys. See? But step out there and lead. You know, this is the way we're going to do it. Unfortunately for Duke, this Seminole team was searching for an identity. And on this day, they would find it. Lightning strikes early as Cannell airs one out to McCorvey and the Knowles are in business. Four more passes and FSU reaches pay dirt, tallying the first points in the opening quarter against Duke this season. The extra point is no good, and it's a six to nothing early lead. Backed up against their own end zone, the Devils seem to throw in the towel early. The score remains the same for the remainder of the first quarter as the two teams feel each other out like two prize fighters. But the second quarter belongs to FSU. The Seminoles unload on Duke with a vengeance and rack up an amazing 32 points. Danny Cannell lights up the sky with brilliant passes. Touchdown, Florida State! Zach Crockett, Warwick Dunn, and Rock Preston Scorch the ground as the offensive explosion decimates the Blue Devils. Here's the snap. Handoff goes to the right side. Rock pressed the bounce off the stack. He is to the 15. He's fast to the 20, to the 25, to the 30. He's out to the 33 yard line. Seminoles lead 21 6. Play a handoff to Zach Crockett. Bulldogs his way in for a touchdown. Play action. Handoff goes to Dunn. Finds him in the hole to the 25. Cuts to the outside of the 20. 15 10. He's to the 5. 3 2 1. Touchdown, Warwick Dunn. The defense shows pure domination. Todd Rebold. It's picked off by Rebold at the 25. Rebold at the 20. He's to the 18-yard line. Well, uh, I think the Duke thought they could come in here and try to run against this. Baldwin's been playing really good. He's been running over a lot of teams in the ACC, and uh, they had to come to Doak Campbell, and I think that we, uh, the defensive line stepped up as well as the linebackers and the secondary. We played as a unit, and uh, we shut them down. Derek Alexander. He spun around, gets up. He's running for his life. He'll be hit and dropped back at the 34 by Derek Alexander. Devin Bush. Throws the pass. It's intercepted. Devin Bush has got it at the 28. Connell Spain. He will hand it off the ball when he's hit in the backfield. He's dropped. For the Duke Blue Devils, the clock strikes 12 on the Cinderella season. When all is said and done and the smoke clears, this one is another ACC blowout at the half. Well, it was nice. Some, somebody, someone asked me uh, after the Duke game if our offense had turned the corner. And uh, I said to them, no, we hadn't turned the corner, but we definitely looked around it. And that's a feeling that I got from the game, that uh, we, we began to put things together and, and uh, uh, put the piece of the puzzle, puzzle together. Quarterbacks Danny Cannell and Thad Busby lead Florida State in the second half, and the route continues. Goes up, makes the catch, touchdown Florida State! Oh my! Cocks the arm, now throws the deep corner route to the end zone intended for Ellison, makes the grab, he's at the one, he did not get in. Inside handoff to Zach Crockett, he scores another one. We were the first team to score on them in the first quarter, if you can believe it, and then we just kept scoring and had a great we put it together that night for the first time. Seminole quarterbacks riddle the Duke secondary for 466 yards, with most of the damage coming from the hands of Kez McCorvey, who had 10 receptions for 207 yards, becoming the only Seminole besides Ron Sellers to total over 200 receiving yards in a game. It felt pretty easy. I guess the, the big games you have, you come in, you kind of relax, and it's kind of it kind of flows along. You know, if if Every catch like, felt like I was supposed to make that catch, and every yard I took it, it seemed, it seemed so easy, so effortless. So I, I can understand what Ryan felt like when he got those 200 yards uh, all those games. The defense limits Duke to a mere 45 yards of total offense in the first half, while ringing up six sacks 
and 13 tackles for loss. Well, this was our statement. You know, we wanted to come out. It was kind of like the second half of the season. We made up in our mind defensively that we was going to go out and try to shut down opponents. And here you had a very good team that came in running the ball. It was playing with confidence, and they were undefeated. So this was kind of our chance to go out there and show people that, you know, Florida State's still there. Well, I think we were pumped up because uh, Duke was coming in 7-0, and and uh, we were unsure of what type of team they were because of the competition that they played in the past. And uh, I think it was another test for us, and uh, we wanted to come out and establish ourselves and, and dominate, and I think we did that. In the end, Duke looked more like a team trying to survive rather than one in a race for a conference title. With the 59-20 to 20 pounding, FSU sets a new ACC standard, winning a conference record 22 straight. On November 5th, the Seminoles traveled to Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta to face the 1 and 6 Yellow Jackets. With the offense in hibernation, the FSU defense is stingy, allowing only three first half points and a scant five yards rushing throughout the day. The offense finally comes around with Melvin Pearsall coming up big. The Seminole backfield makes a point, rushing for 242 yards. Warwick Dunn leads the way with 13 carries for a career high 174 yards. Equally impressive is the special teams performance of Dan Maury. Field goals of 21 and 30 yards, perfect on all extra point attempts. Kickoffs continually deep into the end zone. And while subbing for injured punter Sean Liss, four punts for a 43-yard average. Florida State again rolls 41 to 10. Even though Florida State and Notre Dame were not the top two ranked teams in the country as they were the year before, this game still had the atmosphere of two of the nation's best going at it, and rightfully so. While Notre Dame came to Orlando with three losses, they were still Notre Dame, the only team to defeat the awesome Seminoles national championship team in 1993. And Florida State was still a top ranked team with a seven and one record when Bobby Bowden and Lou Holtz meet, anything is possible. When we go out, let's get everybody outside, David, to you in a pile, and let's hit it together. Remember last year, man, when Notre Dame out, out won this, not W-O-N, but O-N-E. They were more together, remember, more together than we were. Let's hit that field together, let's play together, let's fight together, and let's win together. ABC Sports was on hand in the Orlando Citrus Bowl. As a national television audience, watch the Tribe dominate with a defensive performance to rival any before, and a running attack that was simply unbelievable against a physical fighting Irish team. Coming from last year, we want to revenge against those guys, and, and we want to uh, show the uh, country that we, we were a great defense. And we came out and we played hard and we tried to shut down every aspect of their game and the defensive line the linebackers in the secondary we all played as hard as we could and, and we limited them to yards on offense fsu's defense holds notre dame to only 221 yards of offense the florida state offense picks up 517. The Irish ground game can only muster 138 yards. The Seminole ground game erupts for 332 yards. While the statistics were clearly in favor of the Seminoles, the score would be much closer. Safety Devin Bush picks off highly touted quarterback Ron Paulus on this long pass. I was bracing myself for the run and, and they did a play action fake and I sucked in on the run a little bit, but I recognized it and I, 
and I got back, tried to get back in a uh, courage position. And uh, as I went to turn, I seen Abe in good courage position, so I slowed down a little bit. So I went running to him and uh, keep him from getting interception as he went for it. And he tipped it, and I came up with it. After a scoreless first quarter, kicker Dan Mowry breaks the deadlock with a 20-yard field goal. Later in the quarter, it's Rock Preston. Preston picks up 46 of his 165 yards on the day with this third down direct snap play. Direct snap to Rock Preston. He's to the 35, step by 40, side by 45, 50. He's to the 45 to the 40. He's to the 30. He is run out of bounds at the 26 yard line. After the drive stalls, Maury is called on again. Paulus is picked off again on the next Irish series. Paulus runs to his right, runs to his right, under some pressure, under some pressure, goes it against the rim, it's picked off, picked off with the 15 to the 20, side to the 30, Derek Brooks to the 35, he's to the 38. Oh, Derek Brooks, yeah! you need a play, DB does it. However, Danny Cannell is hit and fumbles, and just like that, Notre Dame is on top. With time running out in the half, FSU moves down the field. Maori again gives the Knowles the lead. At the half, this one now comes down to pride. The Seminoles continue to run up and down the field on the Irish, but can't seem to score. Gosh, we gained over 300 and something yards rushing against Notre Dame. Can you believe it? There's a team that the year before just shut down our running game, and they rushed for 250 or something against us, you know. And so the running game really showed something. We had two backs gain over 163 yards. Uh, Preston gained 165, Warwick Dunn 163, and uh, that's a lot of yards for, for a couple of tailbacks against Notre Dame. Notre Dame adds three more in the quarter as the game goes back and forth. It was kind of like, you know, that dog, that, that, like that gnat that wouldn't go away. You sit there and you beat it to death, but you, you can't knock it out. And that's just credit to their university. You know, they kept on fighting. We knew it was going to be a 60-minute fight. And the score should have been, you know, a lot, a lot more than what it was. But, you know, they just came up with big play, the big play to stop drives and then move the ball. We just played good, sound football and stayed together and played well as a team. It probably came away one of the biggest victories in this school's history. With time running out in the quarter, Cannell goes to the air. But again, the ground game behind terrific blocking comes up big. Inside hand off the press. I step to the 25, to the 20, into the 15, to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Florida State. All out of Preston. I enjoy blocking for those two guys because they're, you know, excitement, like Mr. Excitement, and we have two Mr. Excitements on the field and everything, and with blocking for them, and you always going to, you can't, you don't really don't know what's going to happen because they're going to break along, we're here, break along. Once one goes out, the next one coming, they don't, the level of, of excitement doesn't drop off at any point, and with the roll offensive line blocking hard and me blocking hard for them, that just opens up holes bigger for them and for everybody to see what they can do out there in the field because it's amazing what they can do when they touch the ball. In the fourth quarter, Lou Holtz saves the best for last as the option gets the Irish back into the game. But a missed extra point has Lou feeling blue, and the Seminoles have the emotional edge. In a move of coaching brilliance, Bobby Bowden and his offensive brain trust go deep when run seems to be on everyone's mind. Danny wants to throw, dropping, has time, airs it out, airs it out deep, has a receiver in the area, it is caught, caught at the 
It was a really gutsy call by the coaches. They decided, you know, let's go for a bomb early and try to catch him by surprise. And uh, we caught him in a blitz and uh, saw Kez coming wide open and tried to just give it to him. And he made a great catch. And uh, from there, we just pounded it in because we had the momentum and the linemen were really pumped up. And we'd been running the ball well all day. So we just pounded it right in there. And it was uh, probably one of the biggest throws and catches uh, of the year. Zach Crockett and Warwick Dunn put this one away. Warwick Dunn caps an MVP day, picking up five of his 163 yards with this game-winning TD. Toss pitch goes to Dunn. Dunn gets to the corner, makes his cut. 3 one Touchdown, Florida State! Touchdown, Warwick Dunn! The Seminoles are up by six. It was just a sweep to the left, and I was just following my blockers. Pilsa did a good job of stringing the defense in and out, and I just cut up. Zach made a great block, Cooper made a great block, and I was just in the end zone. The defense is led by Darrell Bush, Derek Alexander, and Derek Brooks. There was a lot of hype before the game, and there was a lot of uh, challenge put on us, you know, saying that we couldn't stop their game. And uh, there was the revenge from last year, you know, that aspect in our minds that uh, they stopped us from a perfect season. And uh, I think that we just got after it. We, we went out there and we, we decided that we were going to dominate the game. And, you know, other than two drives, we dominated their offense. It was a beautiful Orlando day and a big Florida State victory. A monkey was lifted from the Seminoles' back. This was a day of Southern domination. While the score may not have been reminiscent of the play, it was every bit a sweet victory. With a victory over the 25th ranked Wolfpack of NC State, Florida State would claim their third straight ACC championship. More amazingly is that the Seminoles have yet to lose a game to an ACC opponent over those past three years. Wearing their garnet pants for only the third time ever, FSU looked sharp as they made quick work of the overmatched Wolfpack. Warwick Dunn led the way for the Tribe with 122 yards rushing and one touchdown. Rock Preston also chipped in with 81 yards on eight carries and two touchdowns. Derek Brooks led the defensive charge that tallied four sacks, three tackles for loss, three fumble recoveries, and two interceptions. Before another ESPN national television audience, the Seminoles make it 24 in a row over the ACC with a 34-3 victory. Whenever Florida State goes up against Florida, expect the unexpected. On November 26th, in front of a record Dope Campbell Stadium crowd of over 80,000 and a national television audience on ABC, the unexpected did indeed happen. Coach Bowden sets the stage. This, this game today, now, man, it's why we just couldn't ask for a better setting. You know, they're, they're ranked ahead of us, yet we're favored. We win, we win, we take their place to pose. That's what we want. Two, two heck of a football game, but it's in our house. It's in our house. Now remember, men, this is the club. This is the club. This is the coaching staff that has ridiculed us. They have ridiculed us ever since last May. You know, belittle Florida State <coughs> and will not take it back. They don't have to take it back. With their first series of the game, Danny Cannell leads the drive downfield. Dan Maury is called on, and FSU is on the board first. From there, the game would turn from garnet and gold to orange and blue. The Gators would have their way with the Seminoles for the remainder of the half on their way to a 24-3 halftime lead. At the half, it looked like the Gators could do no wrong. 
we were, we were kind of shocked at halftime that we were down like that because we had never been in that situation. And we all put together and, and we wanted to fight as hard as we could uh, to bring ourselves back out the uh, hole we dug for ourselves. All right, man, let's, let's, let's pay good attention now. I know you get tired of hearing this, but last week, Alabama went out there and killed Auburn for a half. 20, 21 nothing. We're behind 21 points right now. Auburn had enough guts to come back and nearly win. They had enough guts to come back and shut Alabama out in the second half. They ended up getting beat by a touchdown. We just had a quarter a while ago, exactly like we did against Notre Dame last week, remember? Same type of quarter. Nobody fighting. They get in every break. They made three, three, they made three plays out there. They, they were behind 21 points. They made three plays. Yeah. The 60 minute ball game we've talked about. Remember last night I kept, I kept telling you about the times that Florida State was behind and came back and won? Well, we're facing the same thing. Man, we're, you are going to find out what you're missing. You did not fight that half. Florida is going to take that film back, and they're going to look at it, and they are going to look at that film and laugh where they whip your butts today. Hey, if you don't, if you won't fight, don't don't go in that skull in the game second half. If you ain't going to fight, don't you dare go in that dang ball game. We got to have great protection. We got to have great blocking. We got to have great running. We got to have great catching. We got to have great pass rush, sacking, hitting. We got to hit us that half. That's the one thing I don't like. But I want you made out of. How much time we got now? How much time? All right, let's go do it. Let's go. We came in halftime. We were getting physically whipped out there, and everything was going their way. And what we needed to do was not to hang our heads low and uh, keep out, keep fighting out there. And the way I think a lot of guys were looking at it was, let's try to keep from getting embarrassed out there and let's make it respectable. More than anything, he just told us what was what we were facing, you know, and he let us make our own decision. Uh, he said that uh, the second half was going to determine what kind, what we were made of. We were going to find out a lot about ourselves in the second half. And uh, not only we, did we not want to lose at home, but uh, I think that we didn't want to be seen as losers, you know, to ourselves and to our fans. So uh, we knew that we had to make a turnaround. Totally dominating in the first two quarters, Florida would do more of the same in the third. The Gators would lead by 28 points going into the fourth quarter. All you can do is fight. You just don't know what to do. There's not really a formula to get back from something like that. You just have to go and just fight your way through it and hope you get some breaks. Our goal and, and our effort is to never give up, no matter what the situation is. So we we're going to play football and fight hard and, until that clock ran out. Gator fans turned Doak Campbell Stadium into their own little party. This was Florida's year to own FSU. Steve Spurrier's frustrations against Florida State were about to end. It was happening right in the Seminoles' own backyard. We were about to be embarrassed in our own backyard, and, and our seniors' last home game uh, was going to be their last farewell, and, and we were going to get whipped by the Florida Gators, which is probably one of our biggest rivals. Uh, it, it was tough. You know, that's when you find out a team's character. But just then, here, comes the unexpected. Danny Cannell would lead the Seminoles on a comeback never before seen by Garnet and Gold faithful. In fact, the tribe's rally would tie a Division I college football record for fourth quarter comebacks. More amazingly, it would come against the Gators. Letting loose in the shotgun, no huddle offense, Danny Cannell spreads it around. Four receivers, here's the snap. Has time, throws it. It is caught at the six. Now to the other said Dunn and Parker. Play a handoff through Parker to the two. One touchdown, Florida State. Well, is it too little, too late? A little too late? Don't count on it. The defense also responds. The Gators go three and out. Here it is. She'll hand it off. And the Seminoles get the ball carrier. Coward stops it for no gain. The next FSU drive only takes three plays. Play action. Cadell stops, knocks, throws the arm down. He'll caught by the play. 40, 35, he's to the 30. Stays in balance to the 26-yard line. Lightning-like throw. 
Here's the snap. Danny looks over the middle. Now throws it to his left. Caught by Dunn at the 25 to the 20. Down to the 15. Down to the 10. He's inside the 10. He's out of bounds at the 7 yard line. Shotgun snap. Danny Cannell rolls to his right. Throws to his right. It is caught. It's caught. Touchdown. Cooper. Cooper's got it. Here it is, team. How quick was that drive? 31 to 16 with 10.04 to go. The defense is again ferocious, forcing the punt. Handoff is going to go to Taylor. He's knocked down to the backfield. He's clutched at the 27, a loss of five. He takes the snap. Here comes Preston. Pressed out of the pocket. Penalty flag thrown. Penalty flag thrown. And Werfels dragged down to the 28. He got a yard scrambling. Danny Cannell continues to plunder the Florida secondary, completing an amazing 34 or 40 passes in the second half for 349 yards. Cannell takes this one himself. Oh, wait, here's the snap. Play action by Cannell, looking. Hey, Cannell's going to run. 3-2-1. Touchdown, Florida State. How about that? Danny Cannell's first rushing touchdown ever. Oh, don't go away. Don't go away. Here's the snap, the kick airborne. It's good. It's good. It's a touchdown ball game with 5.25 to go. On Florida's next possession, James Kolzik keeps the Seminole hopeful electrified. He drops, looks left, throws it left, and it is caught, intercepted, picked off by Colsey, picked off by Colsey, and it comes back to 40, up to 40. Oh, my goodness, Colsey laid it out as far as he could. What a remarkable catch by J.C. First down, Florida State. Here's the Cannell throwing to his right. It's caught by Warwick Dunn. He is to the 45, sideline to the 50. He's down the sideline. 40, 35, 30, 25. He's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. No flags, no flags. First down, great run by Dunn. The running backs, good strength. Here's the snap. Hand off to Preston. Preston, 3-2-1. Touchdown, 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 touchdown. Can you believe it? There was no doubt in my mind that we should get the one point and, and at least not lose the game. Let's put them in an opportunity. Let them go try to win the doggone game. You know, they had a fourth down. Why didn't they, why didn't they, they could have gone for that unless they were ready to say, settle for a tie. Most important placement by Danny Maurer in his career. A minute 45, Gators have a timeout. Seminoles have two. It's 31 to 30. Kick airborne, good, good. With time still remaining, FSU's defense holds again. The offense continues to move, but simply runs out of time. That was a win as far as I'm concerned. You know, I, I hate ties. Um, I would almost rather lose than tie. But uh, in this game right here, uh, you know, I'll take that tie over anything. I mean, just to come back and uh, to dominate a team for, for that entire quarter, that was something special. You players, you players, man. What was it, 31 to 3 and the, yep. going into the fourth quarter? Yeah. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. How much? 10 minutes. Into the fourth? Into the fourth? Yeah. 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 I knew we were going to lose when Omar made that catch. I knew we were going to lose. <laughs> hey, hey, man, that, that, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know what the press will say, but, but, but to me, that was a win to me. And I don't care what y'all say or anybody else. It was a win. Y'all won. You guys, you, we, I, I, I challenged you in there at the half because you were fixing to find out what you were made of, you know? You were just fixing to find out what you were made of because you, you could have quit, you know? Then we come out and take an open drive and go down there and don't get nothing. You could have quit then. And then going into the fourth quarter, you could have quit. But everybody fought and, and fought their guts out, and I am so proud of every one of them. I can't tell you how much. But I'm, I, I, I can't tell you how proud I am, y'all. So let's just thank the good Lord. Let's thank the good Lord and praise the Lord. And so on. Okay, man. Okay. Dear, dear God, thank you for taking these young men who were beat. They, there was no way they could keep from losing. I mean, it's, it's too much. 
But these guys came back with their heart and the defense, the offense, the kicking, and came back and tied it. And had there been another minute, Florida State would have won it. How proud I am of these boys. Please protect them. God bless them. Bless their parents and their girlfriends and all their friends. So thank you, oh God. Amen. Amen. The 1994 Seminole football team will not repeat as national champions, but they did something equally amazing that made Seminole fans just as proud. They never gave up. They showed the true character of a warrior, proud to wear the garnet and gold. Bobby Bowden's Florida State football team displayed for the nation to see their Seminole pride. Thank you.